Hi, it's Donna from Simple Online Solutions and I have with me today Jennifer Forster who owns Gold Power Training on the lovely Sunshine Coast and also the Facebook page called Gold Power Training. So I've asked Jen to come along today and share with us all here. Um, primarily Jen's main claim to fame, I'm going to say, even though I know it's in uh, the uh, training section, is actually about getting free press and I thought that's something that we all need to know about. So first of all, I'd like to welcome you to the call, Jen, and I'd ask you to share a little bit about yourself. Hi, Donna. Thanks for having me on this morning. It's uh, it's it's good to get on and, and, and talk a bit more. It's what I seem to do well. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, look, um, I, I've got a, a business here on the Sunshine Coast called Gold Power Training. It's a women's health and fitness business. Um, that at least is the shop front uh, of what we do. Um, once, once you get inside it, it is so much much more than that. The women um, have created uh, quite a quite a unique uh, community, um, which is more about um, growing your confidence than than growing your muscles. But uh, um, yeah, so that's what what I do. Um, how did that come about? Uh, I originally had um, uh, I originally had a life coaching business which was called uh, Goal Power, uh, without the training on the end. But uh, at that point, I was also working part time as a personal trainer. And what I what I discovered was that uh, for me anyway, um, and and being congruent, which is a big important thing for me, I didn't feel that I was being congruent um, in both of those areas. So with the PT clients, you know, there was some life coaching skills that that I knew I could. Uh, utilize and help them to achieve their goals but you know conversely with the with the life coaching clients um i, I know the benefits you know of health and, and exercise and, and a good diet and exercise in terms of being um you know in some cases a, a complete replacement for antidepressants so in in that respect um I, I was a little bit torn between the two so um i sat with a business coach at the end of 2009 and uh, we, we reinvented uh, Goal Power into what it is today, which is Goal Power Training, uh, the, the women's health and fitness business. But um, yes, uh, you know, because I'm known for free press, you know, if, uh, if you want to jump on my Facebook page, um, Goal Power Training, and check it out, uh, you, you'll be able to see what it is that we actually do. Um, so much more than health and fitness. It really is, um, as I said, it's a community of, uh, of uh, we, call it, um, we call it a belief bank at the, at the center of uh, goal power we have what we call a belief bank and um you know, women come, you know, sometimes with enough belief that they can put some in, um, but on other days you might come and you may need to borrow a little bit of belief. So it's this, uh, you know, quite organic uh, recycling system of growing confidence, uh, yeah, in women. I can see that would be a big thing. Now, you did drop in a little bit about your Facebook page, so I'm going to yes. ask you, why did you decide on Facebook as a marketing tool? Um, Facebook, uh, to be honest, Donna, I, it was a, an accidental discovery for me. Um, because as, I, as I've talked about, my business itself is um, very much community based. So we have this community feel for it. Facebook was the absolute uh, ideal way for me to to continue with that and to um, you know take the an offline presence and put it online. So I did kind of stumble upon it uh, quite accidentally, but um, it's worked very well for me, as you can see. And so how does Facebook then fit in with your marketing plan? Because am I right in saying that all of your marketing is via free publicity? Yes, it, it, it has definitely been in the, in, in the past sort of 12 to 18 months. Um, and again, um, an accidental discovery um, of learning as I go. Um, one thing led to another, um, which, you know, had me understanding that there is a system to to getting free press, and um, anyone can do it. It's it's just taking a little bit of ownership of uh, and a little bit of believing in yourself, and um, and understanding that that uh, the media on the whole won't come to you, but if you take it to them. They're certainly more than, you know, in most cases interested in running your story. The other thing that I discovered too is the media is not interested in, you know, what you sell and, and, and what you, you know, what you do. They're really more interested in the story that you've got to present. 
um, because that uh, you know think like a reader that 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 that's what I kind of learned along the way to think like a reader. So what am I going to be interested in reading about? I certainly am not going to want to you know hear what the the latest you know we get a bit done to death with the uh, the sales and and marketing you know campaigns of this product that product get this for that and get the steak knives thrown in. You know we're very desensitised to that, but a good story. Um, as a reader is something that that you know generally people want to know about so presenting what you do in the format of a story rather than in the form of a product is is, is key so Jen for instance if they're not very well say our listeners are not very good at writing how would you go about because do you write to the local papers or how would you go about getting getting started with doing the free publicity yeah, one of the uh, one of the the simplest ways to do it is yeah is to um, look. Here's what I did. The very first thing I did, I started to write some articles, um, and I just practiced you know with with getting information that I knew into some article formats. Um, and then I went to all my favourite publications. Um, some of them were national publications, and I just started um, emailing you know every sort of three to four weeks. I would um, email email editor at whatever the publication was um, and submit articles to them and you know be prepared for some no's that you know it certainly doesn't happen overnight but you know if you're persistent and you keep you know keep chipping away at it it's it, you know I think we all underestimate what we know um, and it doesn't matter what your you know what your field of expertise is or what your industry is um, if you're in that industry you know, I'm pretty certain there's something inside your head that you know about that you can write about, and and that's that's a great start. So I did that, and um, funnily, you know, funnily enough, one of the first things that happened to me was um, a, a national um, health and fitness publication picked up one of my articles and ran it. So you know that 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 was an amazing learning curve for me to understand that. You know, the media really is, on the whole, generally lazy. You know, they they won't come to you and send out photographers and interview you. But if you can write your story and write your articles down and write about what you know and submit it to them, that they will generally run it. Okay, so Jen, I know that you have been in the paper mm -hmm. and on television, but what other places has this free publicity taken you to or, you know, where? Yeah, um, look, one of the really um, uh, amazing things was when I did, uh, and again, as I said, I've stumbled upon a lot of this as I've gone, but, you know, now I have an understanding around it and I use it, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. But um, uh, I, uh, I did a charity event um, for very personal reasons, but um, I put together a fitness promotion um, and, uh, you know, in view of raising funds for the National Breast Cancer Foundation. And uh, the, the, the objective of it was was to get the, the largest group of uh, women um, to take part in an outdoor uh, fitness uh, session for about 30 minutes, by you know, thereby raising, you know, $20 entry and, and uh, you know, all the money went to the National Breast Cancer Foundation. As I said, that was, I had a personal reason for doing that. However, what happened, that's a really interesting story when it uh, comes to all of the local community papers and, uh, you know, what's going on in the community. There was a, a, a massive interest. You, you know, we got a front front page story in one of the local papers, you know, photo front page, because it's interesting, you know, it's, um, you know, it, it, it's uh, a lot of their readers can relate to it. Again, as a, you know, one of the biggest tips I can give your listeners today is to think like a reader, you know, think like a reader of, of the publications. But anyway, from that particular uh, instance, we, and speaking of Facebook and how it can work for you, <laughs> I had a friend suggest, everyone gets those all the time, you know, that, that pop up, uh, friend suggests. And one of the friend suggests that popped up for me um, on this day was Annette Sim. And, and look, I just looked at it and I thought, hmm, you know, she's definitely in a line with what we do. I haven't got, um, you know, a, a local sort of celebrity of sorts to, to come and, you know, be at this event, that would be a really good thing to add some, you know, credibility to the event. So again, free press is look is definitely about having a bit of gumption as well, and and you know, you know, being prepared to get a no because that's the worst thing that's going to happen. Someone's going to say no, and you you know, worse off. So I took it upon myself. I sent her an email, told her what we were doing, and uh, left it at that. And yeah, 24 hours later, she she phoned me and said, "Look, I really, you know, I love what it is that you've got planned. It's very personal to me too. I'd love to get on board." 
So, uh, you know, having, um, you know, so, so I'm now aligned with, um, with someone, you know, a lot more famous than I was at the time and, and, and that gave credibility to what I did. So that made the press, you know, even more interested in what we were doing. Um, but to go on from there, uh, Annette has, has, you know, we went on to do a, another event as well and uh, between the two events, you know, we raised over or almost $11,000 for the National Breast Cancer Foundation. But, uh, my, you know, I formed a friendship with, uh, with Annette through that whole, you know, journey and process and uh, at the time she was um, putting the finishing touches to her book six. Um, her Simply Too Good to Be True book six. And she invited me to submit a page um, on uh, women's, you know, fitness and, and uh, weight training for women. So, yeah, so from, from just the free press in the local papers, you know, to picking up free press, um, you know, via, you know, her speaking on radio, promoting her book, to me actually being in a, an international cookbook, you know, writing writing in an international cookbook. So three things, you know, three big, big steps happened through that whole process. And it all started from me having, you know, as I said, the gumption to send her an email in, and invite her to come to our, our charity event. So, you know, free press won't come to you. You really do need to go to it and be prepared for some no's, you know, because, you know, um, I always say for, for nine no's, you'll get one yes. Jen, I was just going to say there, the, you know, when you were talking about having the gumption, it's sometimes really scary, isn't it, just sort of stepping out because we sit at our chairs and that fear factor takes over. But really, it, it's like what you say, the worst they're going to do is say no. They're not hating you or anything. And I think that's something that a lot of us fail to remember. Yeah, nobody nobody's going to hate you for it. And particularly, um, you know, your local papers, um, you really, if you can get it into your head that you're actually going to do them a favour, if they've got a, um, you know, if they've got blank space in their, in their paper and your article arrives on their desk on that particular day, they're going to be very, very grateful that you've, you know, that you've written a really good article and they've now got their space to fill, they've met their deadline. So think of it in terms, you know, of, of offering them a solution to a potential problem that they've got. And, and no, they're not going to hate you for it, you know, and if they don't use it, pff, they don't use it, you know send it again or send it to another I've recycled plenty of my articles and sent them to to you know different publications and and different uh, forms of media and, and and media these days is very much about being online as offline you know getting media getting free press um, online um, you know is is just as valuable I believe as getting free press off so Jen is there a particular size that you should write the article like words and do you attach photos to them yeah or does it Yep, definitely. Um, I, I try and keep, if I write an article, I try to keep it to two to 300 words. That's a, a pretty standard column, unless you've been asked to write something bigger. Um, yeah, keep it to around two to 300 words, um, maybe no more than 400. And definitely submit photos because sometimes um, your photos may just, uh, particularly with social columns, I know the Sunshine Coast Daily, the social editor, um, for example, um, if you've had an event go on, they don't have the resources to send cameramen and, and news people and, and photographers out to all of the community events that go on. But if you put on a community event, take a heap of photos and send them into the you know social editor at whatever the publication is. And um, I can tell you that the chances are extremely high that they will run your photos in the social pages of the Sunday paper. Maybe not that week, but they could turn up the week after or the week after, you know, but... Yeah, you just got to be proactive, and I know that is, you know, if you are a little bit, um, a bit shy, and uh, and and you haven't done a lot of writing, you can't really get it wrong. For every article you write, or for everything that you do, the next time you do it, you'll do it a bit better. So it's a practice makes perfect. But yeah, just 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 put yourself out there and don't. Don't be afraid of a no. Okay, it's something I need to try this week. Now, Jen, very quickly, we've only got a couple more minutes left. What techniques have you used to increase your fan base? Yeah, on Facebook, um, the, the one technique that uh, that I really recommend is tagging. Whenever I, you know, any post I write or any um, anything that I put either on my my profile page, which I keep mostly for personal um, businessy stuff, or on the Gold Power page, I tag either the individual or the page or the business or whoever it is, if they're not on Facebook, I'll actually add their link, add their website link. So 
it's me, you know, Facebook will really work for you in growing your fan base if you're giving, if you're giving, 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 because in that giving, you know, people will then start to, they'll, they'll like you in return. You're not asking anyone for anything, but you're just, you know, getting out there and promoting other people. So tagging to me, for me is, is the biggest thing. I'll, I'll tag up to four people or pages or websites if I can on any one post. You know, it's a waste of a post, I think, if you don't get a tag in there. <laughs> Jen, <laughs> you oh get no, that, no. Donna, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> on, a, um, on a personal level, would you say that your Facebook page has increased your um, local business? Oh, look, 100%. Next to word of mouth, um, the, the, the next highest source of business for me comes from Facebook. So for anybody that's starting a small business on the Sunshine Coast or anywhere for that matter, definitely. If they're a, an established business, then you'd say definitely get onto Facebook get and it. use it as a tool. Absolutely. Get um, create a Facebook page. And the only other tip that would go that I would go with that is you need to be on it fairly regularly. You've got to have a presence. So that doesn't mean being on it as much as I am. I'm I'm in the process of curbing my time on Facebook, um, but um, but but definitely, uh, you know, allocate. You know, you only need to allocate ten or fifteen minutes a day. But um, you know, it, for example, you know, if you're a um, you know if you're a, a veterinary practice or or something small, you know that 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 uh, you know you don't think you have much to offer. Um, put a tip on every day. You know, if you're a veterinary practice, you know, set up your page and, or, you know, put a tip on every single day. Link back to um, suppliers of the products that you do, you know, all, all those sorts of things and just do one a day and that, that will very quickly establish your presence on Facebook and, uh, it's a, and, 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 the ne and the best thing about that is you're actually creating um, trust and rapport um, and and that's the biggest, you know, when it comes to sales resistance, you know, trust and, and rapport are the two things that, you know, get in the way of sales. So, you know, for, forget making a sale, just, just build the trust and rapport and Facebook's the easiest way to do that. Excellent. Now, Jen, just before we go, is there one last thing you'd like to share with our listeners? Um, the, the only thing I would say is be proactive, you know, when it comes to um, promoting yourself you know, if you don't do it, believe me, no one else will. You've got to be the one out there banging your own drum. And there's, there's nothing conceited about that. There's not, you know, Australians, um, we really do suffer from that tall poppy syndrome, you know, and it's almost, you know, it's wrong for you to promote yourself. But, you know, believe me, if you're not out there promoting yourself, no one else will be. Excellent. Well, Jen, I thank you very much for coming on to this call today. You've shared some great tips there with us. And we will be over to visit you on Gold Power Training in Facebook. Lovely. <laughs> Look forward. Say hi when you drop over. Excellent. Thanks very much. This is Donna from Simple Online Solutions signing out.